mix it a bit and then release the pressure. Now, some of you are, of course, highly disappointed. Where's the flash, you say? Well, remember, mechanics is a blessing given to us by the Creator. It protects us from an awful lot of trouble. Let's get the lights down and let's see what happens when we light this. Now, it's very, very fast. And so fast, in fact, that this summer um, I was I've been a consultant for uh, a series which is coming out next year called BBC Elements. And you may be aware, some of you may be aware, of the amount of filming that went on in the Graham Lab and the Turner Lab throughout the summer. I'm incredibly grateful to the technical staff for being so patient. But one of the things we were able to do was to use an ultra high speed camera that filmed at two and a half thousand frames per second to actually see the flame going down. And it's an amazing movie, which I wish I had been able to show you. Sadly, the BBC will not let me have the video or show it until the series has gone out. But once it's gone out, if this talk uh, is ever used again, um, I'll show you that. Now, you heard the sound. And of course, what we have here is an organ pipe, in a sense. So the explosion happens down the tube, the confined vibration in the space. And so you get that really nice moving sound. The beauty in that movie is that you can see the shot front going down, vibrating at about 2K, which is more or less the frequency of the sound we're hearing. OK, so we'll just put in a little bit of carbon sulfide for those of you who actually missed it. Um, you, know, you really should stay away from that. Um, so wait a second. We should mix this first um, before we do anything further. Um, I'm not sure that I actually got the carbon dioxide sulfide in there, although there's a good bit of pressure, which is usually a good sign. Um, I may have missed a little bit. Anyway, let's just like this and see. This is a famous 19th century party piece. Um, it continues to be used today, and um, I love it. It scares the crap out of me. So <clears throat> there it is once again. Well, these things were used in photography a lot, and for good reason. Because one of the things that you might want to do was to ensure that you actually got the most energetic and intense light source that you could. <laughs> and you know, those of you who've been in this department for a while know that this is coming. It's an old chestnut. And yet, I just can't resist them. <laughs> Here it is. Um, and some of you are starting to cough. And I apologize for all the that for that. There's an awful lot of lights that come in. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing, and we're going to get about 10 mils of carbon disulfide into it and fill it up. Now, I don't know whether any of you uh, either read the Provost newsletter today or received a viral email which went around the college, um, which talked about a movie from the 1960s showing freshers arriving at UCL and talking about their hopes and fears. And the thing which really struck to all of us old timers who've been here for a long time was that, my God, all the students looked like they were 35. And maybe it's just their haircuts and their, their glasses, but anyway. Um, well, if you go back and look at 19th century photographs, um, you know, some of the people in the photographs look kind of odd. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, if you turn the lights up, can you turn the lights up right to the top? Is that, that's great. Um, watch the top, because you can see nitric oxide reacting with oxygen in the air to generate NO2. And yeah, it's coming your way. <laughs> You guys are sitting at the front. I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> Not for this lecture, anyway. Um, OK, so we're just going to turn this up. Um, now, for those of you starting fourth year projects, um, you'll remember in school, you got test tubes this size. Um, you know, by the time you actually got into the undergraduate labs, you were occasionally given a boiling tube. Um, I'm only senior lecturer. Um, the professors in this department <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so mix it up. And you'll notice that the orange color disappeared. Of course, 
Uh, NO2 is the anhydride, if you will, the acid anhydride of, of nitric acid, and so it dissolves in water. And this is extremely important because the kinetics of the reaction of NO2 with carbon disulfide are actually way, way faster, several orders of 19. And Eustace Liebig wrote to his friend Wöhler in 1855 describing a lecture in which what he'd done was he done this reaction in the presence of the prince and princess Leutpold of Bavaria. And they asked him to do it again. And so he quickly refilled his tube, did the reaction a second time, the damn thing blew up. And he didn't know what had gone wrong, but he was desperate about it. And the prince and princess, in fact, turned out to be quite relaxed in spite of a few cuts. Um, but one of the things that we've learned <coughs> since then is that actually having water at the bottom of the tube actually makes a huge difference. Anyway, I said to you, the nice people in old photographs looked odd, um, and perhaps some of the explanation why they look so odd is simply because they would have had, you know, one of these, two, three, maybe, um, going off around. <laughs>